Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Matt back in the new year. And I thought I'd get on here and just talk to you a little bit about DoorDash, the acceptance rate, why it doesn't really matter, and some of the other ratings, and I'll show you mine also. So before we get into the video, if you haven't already hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, also hit the bell notification so whenever I upload, you'll know. So let's get into it. Why does an acceptance rating matter? It's because it really doesn't. It's basically a number that tells you how many orders you've accepted. And the only time it really matters is whenever you're trying to become Top Dasher. And from what I hear, Top Dasher really isn't all that. And, you know, you can find videos on that. I'm not a Top Dasher. I'm nowhere near that. So, you know, because my completion rating is really low. And, or not completion rating, acceptance rate. I mean, <laughs> completion rate you need. But acceptance rate is basically whenever you get an order and you can accept it or decline it. Or let the timer run out. Whatever one. But you don't have to accept anything. We're an independent contractors, so we don't have to accept those orders. It's not like we're an employee and we have to do everything that our bosses tell us. You know, if we get on with DoorDash, whatever, whatever other one, you know, the ones that are out there, I haven't really tried anyone except for Postmates. And it's not really big in Virginia. So, you know, whenever it comes to DoorDash, I don't accept anything that a lowball orders. So, for instance... Whenever it comes to a $3 order that's going five miles, I don't do it. That's too, you know, you're driving five miles for $3. That's not a worth it or even more. Like I've gotten a $3 order for 10 miles before. They're not worth it. What are worth it is you get like an $8 order for only two miles. I've gotten those a couple times, a few different times. And sometimes it seems like whenever you decline those um, orders that are lowball, you know, <clears throat> usually it seems like not too long afterwards. I, me personally, I've gotten some decent, you know, decent money or orders from declining those, but not all the time. Sometimes I get pretty bad orders, you know, here and there. And I, I don't I haven't done this that, that very long. I really haven't. Started last summer, and there you go. But I'll show you my ratings right now and show you how much what I do. So customer rating, which you need, got a 4.83 out of, and you can only get a 5.0. That's the highest that you can go out of 100 deliveries, 15% of acceptance rate, 94% completion rate, which matters. And then this one somewhat matters, but it can still get de deactivated. Out of 180 deliveries, that's not too bad. But <clears throat> acceptance rate or customer rating, you have to have a 4.2 or higher in order to stay on DoorDash. And if you go below that, you can deactivate it. And what customer rating means is probably basically self-explanatory. You will, <clears throat> you know, your customer will give you a rating. Uh, I think it's like a star points of like one to five, I believe, but I could be wrong. And you want, it's basically like, you know, the customer experience with you. Like, you know, if you just say you were late from getting their order, you stayed in contact with them. You know, you told them what was going on. You know, if the, <clears throat> you know, if you were going to be late, you know, you stayed in contact, you stay, you know, good with them, then usually you'll get a good customer rating. But if you don't, sometimes you won't get one. It all depends. But you want to keep that customer rating high. <laughs> As you can see, mine's a 4.3 or 8.3. And then completion rate. It's 80, you have to have an 80% to keep, you know, stay on, 80% or higher to stay on the DoorDash app, or then you could get deactivated. And what completion rate is, and as you can see, mine is a 94% completion rate out of 100 deliveries. So what completion rate is whenever you accept an order and then you decline it, you know, or you even just, you know, accept it and then you complete it. You know, so you want to keep that up. So if you, the reason why it will go down is if you accept an order and then you decide to decline that order for whatever reason, whether you have a personal emergency, you, you know, accidentally accepted it and it was a lowball order for like $3 for like 10 miles or whatever, you know, you don't accept those. So, you know, you'll want to decline it. Sometimes you just want to keep that you know, cus or that rating high for completion rate, and you'll just say forget it and just do it. But you don't always have to. 
that's just something that you want to keep in mind though that you need to keep that up above an 80 percent so you don't want to just accept an order and keep declining them keep canceling them because then you can get in trouble and get deactivated and then acceptance rate as you can see right here says this is on the website i know you probably can't see that that well but it says no minimum acceptance rate so this is the doordash help website and right here on time early it says required lateness or no repeated lateness may result in deactivation so what it means by that is yes the last one mine is 87 percent as you can see right here out of 100 deliveries and that does actually matter to a point you want to try to keep this you know on time early rate pretty high you don't want to go below i don't it doesn't say how low you can get it but you don't want to go you know you don't want to keep on doing it and you know being too late being too late being too late on every order because doordash will look at it and be like oh well we can get rid of you because you've been too late on order so you want to try to get to the restaurant <clears throat> and get there on time and then keep in contact with your customer just in case if you are late but the one thing that you'll notice as you go through your area is you'll notice what restaurants to go to and what to avoid. And what I mean by that is because these orders, <clears throat> you know, some restaurants are slow. Some restaurants will sit there and make you wait. Like, for instance, me, I was in Fredericksburg with my fiance one day uh, a couple months back during the summer, and we had a Chipotle order right off route three and we went there it was at seven o'clock and next thing you know we waited there for 30 minutes we got an add-on order for chilies and that was at 7 30 we had to pick that up so our orders were late just because of the restaurant so you want to make sure that you pick and choose which restaurants you know will be on time and fast and you can get in get out and go and not have to sit there and wait on these restaurants because some of them will make you late. But all in all, the acceptance rate doesn't matter. So don't worry about that. Don't even look at that. Just forget it. If you find an order that you don't like because it's a low ball order, don't do it. Just don't because it's not worth it. If you find a good order, accept the good orders. Because, I mean, <laughs> you don't want to waste your money and your time because... As you know, time is money, and you don't want to accept a order that you're going three, you know, three dollars for ten miles or even seven miles. That's not worth it. So all in all, acceptance rating doesn't matter. The really the only ones that matter is customer rating. Remember, four point two or higher, stay on the app. Completion rating, eighty percent or higher, stay on the app. And then you don't want to be late, and you want to be early to you know pick up your orders. So yeah, if you don't, if you have any more questions, leave them down in the comments. I'll help you guys the best I can. And yeah, have a happy new year, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.